waiting for your husband to drop out of the race. How are you feeling about this state of the race? All right, ladies. Are you me? This is how crazy things are. Uh, Tuesday, let me get the date because I keep on getting it mixed up. Uh, Tuesday, the 9th of July. Uh, so, Monday, uh, various news organizations started attacking Dr. Jill Biden because what they're doing, they're trying to see if they can find some way to get a reaction. Forget anything that Melania Trump may not have said uh, about Stormy Daniels or any of the other stuff that uh, her husband Trump has been up to. Right now, Dr. Jill Biden has done nothing, but at Fox News, the Washington Post, people on Blue Tick Twitter just feel that, right, it must be Jill Biden who's telling husband, uh, President Biden, to stay in control, stay fighting for those who don't have a voice, stay being the nominee of the Democrat Party to be President of the United States of America. They are throwing as much mud to see if they can find something that sticks. So, uh, the Washington Post, send a letter to Dr. Jill Biden. Uh, Fox and Friends, pick up on it. Oh, guess what's happening now? Jill Biden's the one standing in the way of her husband, uh, you know, moving on. It is all garbage, total garbage. The thing the Democrats have got to do is ignore it. Let other people highlight the shit, but ignore it and carry on. They will not be able to keep it off. Yes, there probably will be more press briefings. Yes, there'll be more heckling and shouting at Joe Biden. Yes, there'll be more people chattering about it, but they will not be able to keep it up. President Biden is a very resilient and very strong character. At the end of the day, all of this noise, it's a bit like one huge Alex Jones fart, I don't know, played through a sound machine with a vol sound machine with the volume turned off. That's it. Nothing more. It's all noise. There are a lot of people who are behind President Biden going about it, not needing to post a meme, not needing to run to a microphone, not needing to make sure that they are a talking head, not needing to make sure they're following the sheep and making sure that they put their contribution to it as well. <clears throat> the majority of people are just getting on with it and that's what I think uh, the Dems should do. Thoughts? My dad served as a signalman, in, a Navy signalman in World War II. And as Gloria said, in 2003, our son Bo joined the Delaware Army National Guard and served for a year in Iraq. So this is personal to us. We know what it's like to wait on a lagging phone call from across the world, to smile through another holiday with an empty chair at the table. So let me ask you this. Does Donald Trump know anything about military things? No. He disparages those who sacrifice for our country. His own chief of staff said he called POWs and those who died in war losers and suckers. He's evil. He said he didn't want to be seen with injured veterans because it didn't look good for him. It's disgraceful, but it's not surprising. Donald Trump wakes up every morning thinking about one person and one person only, himself. We know what Donald Trump was like as commander-in-chief, and it could be worse this time. Last week, the Supreme Court ruled that there are virtually no limits on what a president can do. Our democracy cannot withstand a Trump presidency with virtually no limits. Service members honor their oath to support and defend the Constitution. We cannot trust Donald Trump to do the same. The military community deserves better. You deserve a commander-in-chief who serves with integrity and wisdom and character. And that's my husband, Joe Biden.
Yeah, she yeah. said he supported my career, so I'm going to support him. If he's all in, I'm all in, and she's on the campaign trail. She's right. very ambitious. Yesterday alone, she was in North Carolina, Georgia, and Florida, and Kevin McCarthy was interviewed about what what is he seeing? What is he seeing behind the scenes? And he said she's actually the one who calls the shots. Listen. Jill out there, she's a hard campaigner. I will tell you it's much different of why I know that they're going to stay in this race. Jill doesn't want to leave either. Many times when we had meetings in the Oval Office, Jill was there as well. Many times, I don't think she's there for policy. I think she's there to give him comfort and direct the meetings. It, it was very telling at that, uh, in that soundbite we just played with her. She said, Joe's all in and so am I. Because there are many who feel that because the president appears infirmed or needs stage direction, she's essentially the stage manager. Maybe it's more like America. I'm all in and therefore yeah, he's in. Well, no, <laughs> she says I'm all in. Here's the thing. Um, they are fighting for their lives, but rather than him being out because he can't, uh, she's out. That's why she's barnstorming. That's why she was in three states yesterday. Um, because they have made it clear they are not going to leave the White House without a fight. And Joe has warned people close to him, according to Axios, he's staying in but that is not a sure thing because he knows that if the Democratic leaders or the elites, as he referred to them yesterday, if they say, Joe, we can't raise money anymore, uh, Hollywood says you got to go, the pundits say you got to go, uh, all these Democrats in unsafe for Democrat con uh, congressional districts say you got to go, he's got to go. But Donald Trump was hit, hit the nail on the head. It's about ego. And it's 100%. not just Joe Biden's ego. It's Jill Biden's. But can yeah. we just talk about that? Because, you know, we were told in the past administration about norms and customs. Did you hear about Melania in, in the Oval Office with meet, meetings? Did you hear about Michelle Obama in the Oval Office? with? Me? Did you hear about Laura Bush? I mean, I mean, maybe we heard about Hillary Clinton. Absolutely not. Maybe she would have discovered some things if she was in the Oval Office. There has never been a time where the first lady is directing things with inside of the uh, the Oval Office, and it's just it's just sad. And I, we, Fox, Fox and Friends first had a guest on that was talking about this. At what point does it become elder abuse? It's clear he doesn't know certain things are happening. Something that I noticed when she was walking from the coffee shop to the car. When she was out on the campaign trail yesterday, a reporter, a female reporter, we couldn't see her face, was yelling, saying, what do you think about these House Democrats calling for your husband to drop out? And she didn't answer, and she's walking to the car, and then she finally turns to the reporters, who scream questions at them mm -hmm. all, the time. all the time. I've never seen this reaction from her. She says, why are you screaming at me? You know me. Don't scream at me. Let me talk. But then, she, then she didn't talk. talk. Right. Here she is telling the reporters this. But it's very... It's very and telling she didn't to me. The question. She didn't answer the question, but it's very telling. She normally doesn't stop and talk to the reporters, but to me, it seemed like she is so tired of everyone asking her and putting pressure on her that in that moment, she turned to them and she just she snapped in a way. Well, listen, I, I think ultimately, it, for the Bidens, it is an existential threat to their survival because I think Joe thinks as well he, as he can that if he's not president, he can't protect his family. Exactly. And he, he knows... You're talking about Hunter? That, well, you know what? He knows, and we've heard this from the Hunter team, uh, that they feel like um, Republicans, if they could, would go after Hunter. Mm -hmm. And that's why he wanted And they that probably worry. Deal. They probably worry. He's done politics he's his entire worry life. About, I, think, I think Joe worries about his whole family. And the peril they could be in if Donald Trump and Republicans return to power in the uh, administration. And so it's like, I I'm not going to listen to anybody because I'm doing this for, not for America, well, he already, but for my family. Well, he that note. I do really want to hear from those members as they go in and emerge from that meeting and maybe even during the meeting. Uh, yeah, let, hang on one second, guys. Jerry Nadler, who has come out and said the president should step aside, is speaking right now. Let's listen. He's the only candidate. Sir, you do need to talk to the mayor. Sorry, just about the next year. Do you have any concerns about being able to serve out the rest of this term? No. Just sir, to be so clear, sir, you do not want the president to drop out? I do not. Sir, is your support for the president a pragmatic consideration, given that the president has said he will remain in? Well, yeah. I know. He said he's going to remain in. He's our candidate, and we're all going to support him. That kind of leaves you with no choice, then, I take it. 
I'm talking about William. Well, okay. yes. Um, as the president said, uh, something like 90% of Democrats voted him in the primaries. He won the nomination, and that's going to be matter. Thanks, sir. So why the reversal? How do you feel about the fact that a Parkinson's specialist visited the White House eight times in the last year? Well, apparently he visited for other people, according to the White House. Well, at least one time he visited with the president. Well, according to the White House. president's entitled so, to have an Chairman, examination. you're changing your mind now. No, I'm not changing my mind. Guys, behind, behind the security barrier. Okay. We need to get set for Lauren's live show. All right, now we are going to keep monitoring that to see what other members go in. But what you just heard there is hugely important. That was New York Congressman mm -hmm. Jerry Nadler, the ranking member, I believe, of the House Judiciary Committee at this point. Karen Finney, there were reports that in the private phone call among House leaders the other day, Nadler, the man you just heard there, was one of the members of Congress who said that he wanted President Biden to step aside in the presidential race. Now, as he is walking into this meeting, he says President Biden is our candidate. He says he is firmly behind the president.